tete-a-tete -tete with my political opponent in public? No, thanks. I don't think that sounds like the better part of wisdom. Look at it as two open-minded politicians, peaceably exchanging divergent views. No grudges, no hard feelings. After your long and illustrious career as a congressman, I'd think you'd learn by now that that's the way the game's played. It looks as though your chances of unseating me have been considerably diminished thanks to the Stacey Phillips piece. A scoop, which I have no doubt she got by the sheerest accident. Her father was the accident, as a matter of fact. The good Dr. Phillips and his charming fiance. In fact, if I didn't know that you and he were mortal enemies, I'd say you put him up to it. Mortal enemies? Dave Phillips and I? Now, where on earth did you ever get such a piece of misinformation as that? <laughs> Waiter? <laughs> what did you say? Now, just please repeat uh, what you said, Miss Brubaker. I said I'm pregnant with Vaughn Sumner's child. Your Honor, may I say something? This is an informal hearing, Miss Brubaker. If you have something to add to the comment you've just made, I'm sure we would all be more than happy to hear it. Well, um, I know that this really throws a wrench into everything, and I am sorry about that. But um, as I was sitting out there waiting to be called, I realized that there's no better place for the truth than in here and no better time than now. So I just decided to do it. To admit I'm pregnant, I mean. Yes. Well, thank you. Mr. Webster, do you have any more questions for this witness? <laughs> Please have a seat. Well, the tests were very successful. I was able to identify your problem. Oh? Hypertension. I'm glad you came to see me when you did. Hypertension? You mean high blood pressure? Yes. It's responsible for all the um, symptoms you've described to me. The uh, headaches, the dizziness, the insomnia. No, no. I'm sorry? No, you, you have my tests mixed up with someone else's. I really don't think so, Mrs. Randolph. Look, the reason for my problem is this business with my ex-husband. Now, if you would just give me a tranquilizer, I'd be just Wait, fine. I thought we were through with all of this. I thought you weren't going to argue with me anymore. Well, we were, but I, I think you're wrong. I'll be glad to show you the test. Well, I don't need to see them. I know what the problem is. Mrs. Randolph, your blood pressure is 170 over 100. That alone is proof of what I'm saying. Are you saying... That you won't give me tranquilizers? What? what is going on here? I thought this was settled. Yesterday, you were eager to take my advice. And look, that was all before I, I was poked and prodded and questioned. I mean, this whole experience has been so humiliating, and it's been nothing but a waste of time. Well, I'm very sorry you feel that way. I think it would be best if you just found another physician. I'll be glad to make the referral. Oh, no, no, thank you. But I suggest... You do it immediately, because your condition needs immediate treatment. Well, I can just take care of myself, doctor. Uh, Mrs. Randolph, would you wait, please? Now, this is too serious for a temper tantrum. Temper tantrum? This is not a temper tantrum. This is indignation. Now, I asked you to give me a tranquilizer, and you refused. So do you suppose that you could... You could give me a good antihistamine for, for my hay fever? No, that is out of the question. You have high blood pressure. That would only cause serious problems. <laughs> I didn't say that, Mrs. Randolph. It's just that your hay fever needs to be treated by a different drug. Oh, dang! Dr. Martin! Mrs. Randolph, would you wait up, please? Mrs. Randolph! Work together, you and Dave Phillips. On what? An urban development project that's about to be launched. Really? 
And at whose expense, the city's or the state's? <laughs> or is this some uh, PR project that will be dropped quietly after the campaign? Oh, no, no, not at all. This is very much a reality. And it's to be funded by Commonwealth Trans Express. But enough of how I plan to win this election. Now that your true attitude toward your constituency has been brought to light, uh, what sort of strategy are you planning to fight the bad publicity? Oh, I don't consider it bad publicity. I'm convinced that before this is over, the voters will realize that a professional sports team is just the thing Kingsley needs to get its economy rolling. Well, there might be some advantages to the idea. If a town this size could ever attract such a franchise, which we both know it can't. We'll see. Well, getting back to your redevelopment project, you said it was being funded by CTE. That's Preston Carpenter's new shipping company, isn't it? Yes, but that's all I can tell you right now. Oh, it'll be hitting the paper soon. You'll be able to read about it in detail. Well, listen, I've got to run. I thank you for the coffee. I'll be waiting to read about your project. I'm sure you will. You know, I think I'll include a couple of quotes about my opponent being out playing football while I'm out trying to save jobs. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Do you have any more questions for the witness? Oh, yes, Your Honor, I certainly do. Mr. Brubaker, how many times did you and uh, Mr. Sumner get together after he was married? An approximate number will do. Right afterwards, none. We didn't see each other at all. I beg your pardon. Well, after Courtney and Vaughn got married, he stayed away from me. Then, one afternoon, we, uh, we ran into each other, quite by accident, of course, you know, nothing planned. And we got to talking, and one thing led to another, got and... got to talking, and I... What, uh, what was the subject of your conversation? Did Vaughn bring up his uh, marriage, Courtney? Was that part of what you talked about? He talked about the problems he was having with Courtney, if that's what you mean. What kind of problems, specifically? Well, he told me how insensitive she was to him. Insensitive in what way? Oh, by making comments about an old boyfriend of hers, Peter Davidson, um, just to hurt him, by constantly throwing in his face the fact that their marriage had never been consummated and insisting that it was his problem, things like that. So Vaughn turned to you for uh, comfort, shall we say? And to prove that what Courtney was, was saying wasn't true, of course. But Vaughn still maintained that the, uh, that the affair had ended when he got married. Now, why would he do that? Because he didn't want to hurt Courtney any more than was necessary. And I guess because, like most men, he just wanted to have the best of both worlds. To use me to prove that he wasn't inadequate sexually and just have me leave out the part about being unfaithful. Like I said, I know that this messes things up, but I don't want to commit perjury. I just have one more question. Uh, what kind of uh, arrangements or plans had Mr. Sumner made for uh, his child which you're carrying? None. He, he doesn't know about it yet. You didn't tell him that you're carrying his child? No. Your witness, Mr. Myers. Uh, I'm just a little curious, Miss Brubaker. Why haven't you told Vaughn? No, I just haven't yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Your Honor, this witness is, in effect, presenting her pregnancy as proof of Vaughn Sumner's sexual adequacy. I find that I really have no choice but to challenge that proof, if I may, with your permission. Go ahead. <clears throat> Ms. Brubaker, since you are so concerned with not perjuring yourself here, would you be prepared to swear to this court that your child could have no other possible father but Vaughn Sumner? Are you prepared to make such a statement? Now hold on a minute, Hugh. Just calm down, will you? I mean, we can talk about this. You told Stacy that you were planning on bringing a professional football franchise to Kingsley. And in order to do that, you told her your top priority, your first priority, was to establish this uh, sports medicine wing at the hospital. For your information, when I leave here today, I'm going directly to campaign headquarters and talk to my press secretary. 
he's getting out a clarification today that I am completely in support of the Rape Crisis Center. Oh, so you're changing your story. Then. I'm not changing anything. I'm just trying to get the facts straight. Yes, well, those facts don't agree with what you told Stacy. Well, when she talked to me, she never once brought up the Rape Crisis Center, so I never had an opportunity to speak in favor of it. Well, uh, you trying to tell me now that your first priority is the RCC? Yes, and always has been. Oh, it's true that at the last meeting of the board, uh, during a discussion of what to do with hospital funds, I brought up the subject of the sports wing, but only as a long-range project. Then when it was decided that both projects would be funded, I put first priority on the Rape Crisis Center, and I put the sports wing on the back burner for now. Well, then how did Stacy get the idea that you were against well, I don't know. The... There was a lot of debate on it. Uh, maybe she overheard some misinformation. The thing is that she interpreted my comments at lunch as a final rejection of the Rape Crisis Center, which is totally and utterly false. Hmm. And uh, you're going to be issuing a statement this afternoon, right? Yes. And the next time you send out reporters on a story, tell them to get the story straight. I repeat the question, Ms. Brubaker. Are you prepared to make such a statement? Is Vaughn Sumner the only person who could possibly be the father of your child? Yes, and I can prove it if I want to. After the baby is born, with blood tests. So you intend to carry this pregnancy to term? I haven't decided that yet. Uh, look, that's really beside the point. After all, I do have uh, a calendar, a diary, as well as a very good memory of the... Oh, for heaven's sake, do we really have to go through this, Your Honor? If you want a statement from my doctor... No, I no, 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 no. That, that won't be necessary. In fact, I think we have heard all we need to know. You may step down, Ms. Brubaker. Well, gentlemen, do I dare ask for summarizing statements at this point, or are we too confused to think? Mr. Meyer? Uh, well, Your Honor, I, I do admit to being in a rather state of shock here. <laughs> However, if there are no objections from Mr. Webster, I am prepared to carry on, sir. Well, I see no reason in the world not to continue, Your Honor. Very well. But before we proceed, if this were a formal hearing with an impaneled jury, I could understand the need for a review of the testimony in some detail. But since that is not the case, I would appreciate it if you gentlemen would make your remarks as brief and as to the point as possible. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Myers. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. <sighs> well, I uh, do confess that I feel a certain uneasiness about our last witness, Miss Brubaker. Uh, Miss Brubaker claims to be pregnant. Now, that may or may not be true. She further claims that Vaughn Sumner must be the father of her child, a claim which, to my mind at least, uh, is open to question. After all, isn't it reasonable? that if Vaughn Sumner is so determined to keep his marriage together as he told us he is, isn't it reasonable to assume that it would be an easy thing for him to locate a young woman who was pregnant and who was already planning to have an abortion so the father could never be identified, and then by whatever means necessary, convince her to testify on his behalf? I at least have to uh, consider that possibility, Your Honor. But let's, for the moment, Give Miss Brubaker the benefit of the doubt and accept her story as the truth. What does that leave us with? Your Honor, I maintain that it leaves us with the one very glaring discrepancy which riddles the entire testimony of the defense. And that is the highly questionable allegation that Vaughn Sumner has no trouble whatsoever in consummating an extramarital affair. It is only within the legal marital situation, only with the woman whom he claims to have such a deep abiding love for. It is only with his wife, Your Honor, that the problem of his impotence becomes insurmountable. 
Well, Your Honor, I must admit that I find that story very hard to believe. And as a defense, it is illogical, it is perverse, or perhaps just plain fiction. In short, Your Honor, I ask you to consider these facts and to grant my client, Courtney Sumner, the annulment which she requests and which, in my opinion, she deserves. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Mr. Webster. <sighs> Your Honor, uh, I, I just want to reestablish that this is an annulment proceeding that was brought on the grounds of impotency. See, whether or not uh, my client loves his wife, whether she loves him, or whether or not she has a free ticket to a divorce on the grounds of adultery, as she very well might, this isn't the case here and has absolutely no bearing on what we're talking about. What I believe we must concern ourselves with here is only that testimony which is relevant to Mr. Sumner's alleged condition. Now, it has certainly been made abundantly clear in the testimony that uh, Courtney Carpenter Sumner, at the time of her marriage, was immature, overly protected, reared in comparative wealth, and uh, therefore probably accustomed to having her every wish granted by loving but overindulgent parents. Now, it is because of this uh, sheltered upbringing that she was inexperienced, a virgin with an over-romanticized idea of, of what love and sex and uh, the responsibilities of marriage would be like, and with very little understanding of the psychosexual needs of a man. Now, she's a beautiful young woman, the kind of young woman that an idealistic young man might put up on a pedestal, worship from afar. He might see her as untouchable. In fact, he might even be so intimidated by what he saw as her goodness and purity that certain sexual problems might easily arise. Now, this psychological fact, along with the other factors that we've discussed here, worked in combination on Von Sumner and eventually led him to have an affair, albeit with his wife's best friend. It's not so unusual and incongruous as it may seem. But it is, uh, it is these complicated psychological questions and factors that we're dealing with here today. I firmly believe that any psychiatrist would support me in my conclusions. Now, as to the surprise testimony of Miss Brubaker, I cannot make any comment on the morality of it, nor on the possible future effect it might have on Mr. Sumner, relationship with his wife, but your honor, I do believe that it is absolutely concrete proof positive that Von Sumner is not impotent. And it is that question, and that question alone, on which the disposition of this case must be based. Thank you very much. Thank you for your statements, gentlemen. I'm going to deliberate on them, and I will give you my decision. You may wait here if you like. Gentlemen, I have made my decision. Sit, 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 sit. A few remarks first, if I may. Now, as you both know, cases of law are never tried on multiple grounds, nor are multiple verdicts ever handed down. Point in fact, a given trial never deals with more than one challenge or one question at a time. Now, in this particular case, as Mr. Webster has pointed out, the question is very clear cut. Is Vaughn Sumner impotent? Or is he not? Now, I admit that there is a maze of psychological problems that are as deep as they are beyond comprehension. But the fact remains that Dr. Phillips has testified that there is nothing physiologically disabling to Vaughn Sumner in this area. Bottom line, gentlemen, the young man is capable of having sexual relations with a woman. Therefore, he is not impotent. Based on the preponderance of evidence, 
I am going to have to deny the request for annulment. I'm proud of you, Beverly. I'm very proud. The amount of money you had placed in our joint money market account is very impressive. My research will be greatly furthered by your generosity. You did very well with Dr. Martin this morning. You played your part perfectly. And you were right to call me before going to see him again. He lied to you, Beverly. And now we're going to get even with him for that lie. You don't want him to get away with that, do you? I want you to go to Walker's Drug Store today. I want you to speak directly with the chief pharmacist. I want you to tell him that your doctor told you to ask for the strongest over-the-counter antihistamine available. Now be sure to mention Dr. Martin's name several times and stress that he works at the Bedford Institute. When you get home, I want you to take twice the recommended dosage. That will give you the relief you've been looking for, the relief that Dr. Martin has been denying you. Beverly, you've earned a rest, a long rest after all the struggles you've been through. Enjoy it. It's your reward. 